Here we're going to be looking at issuing preferred stock. Now this would be similar to issuing common stock, but with our preferred stock here, we have to set up its own separate equity account. Now, for example, your Corporation A is authorized to issue 20,000 shares of an 8% $50 par value preferred stock. Now the 8% here represents a fixed dividend rate. And we're going to have two issue dates here. Um, first here, we're going to issue 5,000 shares for cash here at $108 per share here on March 1st, and then we're going to have have a next issue here of 2,000 shares for cash here at $112 per share here on September 1st. And we're also going to look at an accumulate, cumulative dividend here for two years. That's in arrears that has to be paid on this preferred stock. And we'll just look at it at the end of the year entry here. So what we have to do is with this preferred stock here, we have to set up a separate equity account for it here on the balance sheet. Now this would be separate from the common stock or treasury stock and so forth. So we have to set up the separate equity account here for preferred stock at its par value here and then we have to have an additional paid in capital account here um, for for this for any additional amounts received in this preferred stock above the uh, par value here and then we have our cash account that's the actual cash receipts here. Uh, that we received on this preferred stock. So what we have, again, just to review here, we have to have allocate the cash received here between the par value of the stock and the additional paid in capital on the stock. So first starting with our cash account here, and we'll just look at these two separate dates here. So on March 1st here, we issued 5,000 shares at $108 per share. So that equals $540,000 that we debit to our cash account here. And then on September 1st, we issued an another 2,000 shares at $112 per share, and that's 220, we'd receive $224,000. So we debit our cash account here for $224,000 here on 9-1. Now, what we have to do is uh, we have to set up this equity account here for the preferred stock at its par value here. So looking at our March 1st date here, well, we issued those 5,000 shares at the $50 par uh, value per share here. So that's worth $250,000 that goes credits against our preferred stock here for March 1st and then here on September 1st we issued an additional 2,000 shares again at the par value here $50 per share that's worth here $100,000 so we credit our preferred stock here for $100,000 here on 9-1. Okay so what we have to do is we have to take any excess over the par that goes against the additional paid in capital here account for this preferred stock. So first looking at uh, March 1st here. Well, we had those 5,000 uh, shares here times the difference between the $108 per share received less the par value of $50. So that amount here would be equal to $290,000. Credit here for $290,000 on our additional paid in capital. And then we have those additional 2,000 shares issued on 9-1 here times the difference between the uh, cat or the issue price here that we received the $112 minus the par value that $50 par value on the stock here so that difference here times 2,000 uh, shares here gives us $124,000 of um, uh, cash here so uh, just looking at our uh, and that goes against our additional paid in capital here on 9-1. So just looking at our balances here. So looking at 3-1 here, well, we have a credit here to the preferred stock of 250000 plus a credit here to the additional paid in capital here of 290000 And that balances with the debit here that we have for cash of $540,000. Now the same would be true here for our 9-1 date. Our credits here of 100000 plus the additional paid in capital credit amount here of 124000 thousand balances with the cash receipts debit amount here of 224,000. So same as common stock all we had to do here is set up a separate um, equity account here for the preferred stock and any addition any additional amount we received above the par value the issue par value here goes against the additional paid in capital and then of course we just uh, record our cash receipts here based on the issue price or what we received when we issued that stock. Okay, so we've taken care of that here. Now let's just go look at this cumulative dividend that's payable, on, or not payable, but that's owed on this stock here. So to calculate that, all we take is the 5,000 shares plus the 2,000 shares, total amount here of 7,000 shares that were issued, times its par value, $50 here, and that amount here would be 
$350,000. Now at a dividend rate, that's on a yearly basis here. I just want to show that 8% uh, dividend rate here times that $350,000 worth of um, par value stock here. That's equal to $28,000. So now we just look at the years in arrears here. Well, we had two years here times the 28,000 gives us our cumulative dividend here of $56,000. All I really wanted to go through here is just to show you that you take your par value of the stock here times the shares that are outstanding. Then your dividend rate here is on a yearly basis here of 8%. And that amount here equals the accumulated dividend. And then any years, anything that you owe here, well, I just threw it out here, for example, two years, you take that times your cumulative dividend here based on the shares outstanding times whatever amount of uh, years that our period is owed here that gives you your total cumulative dividend. Okay so what, did, what do we do here with this cumulative dividend here? Well what we have to do is we have to disclose it in the note to the stockholders equity section um, for the uh, financial reports. It's not reported as a liability at this point. All it is is put down here as a note in our stockholders uh, equity section here, the balance sheet. And, and that's that year-end reporting here, and that would be the accumulative dividend. I just went through basic example here and how to calculate it here. Just remember par value times the number of shares outstanding times the dividend rate, and then for whatever period you have outstanding, you'd have to include that here as your total cumulative dividend. Okay, so uh, just to go over this one more time here, when you're issuing preferred stock here, just remember, set up its own separate equity account here, and it's issued at a par value here. You have to set that up for your, for the par amount that it's issued at. In any addition ha above the par value, it would have to be allocated to additional paid in, account, uh, paid in capital account here for the um, preferred stock here. And then the cash account, that's the actual cash receipt or uh, based on the issue price. Okay, so that goes over, uh, goes this, we've just gone through here how to issue preferred stock, similar to common stock, just set up its own equity account and follow th through uh, allocating the, the par value here and the additional paid in capital.